Hello again, it's Tom. Uh, in this video, what we're going to do is we're going to create a generic interface as well as a generic structure. Okay, and we'll uh, we'll play around with the working, making those things work together. Now, there's a, a number of different structures and classes that are related to this part of the video or this particular video. Um, I'll just run through them uh, very quickly with you. First off, let's open up uh, Simple Point. Okay, so in Simple Point, there is we've seen this before in a previous um, a previous video, uh, a very simple structure called Simple po Point that has a public X property and a public Y property. Okay, not complicated. Um, I've created a new class that's uh, similar to Simple Point um, called Precise Point, and this is defined in PrecisePoint.cs. So it's a class as opposed to a structure, no, no big deal. Um, it, it's X and Y are actually doubles instead of integers, um, but you know, they still have an, it still has an X and a Y. Uh, it's a class I've decided to override the two string. I could have done that in a structure as well, but more typically we would see this done in a class. And it has a constructor as well, which is simply sets the X and the Y properties. So that's my precise point is what I've decided to call that. Um, based on precise point, this particular class, I've also created a child class, and I've, which is a, essentially a precise point that adds a label property. So I've called it labeled, labeled point. Um, so there's a label property that's public. Uh, I've overridden to string again to include outputting the label. And then the constructor changes a little bit as well because there's three elements, not just the two. I call the base constructor to set the X and the Y, and then I just set the label. Okay, so uh, there's those two classes in that one structure. Now, clearly, those things are, uh, all of those things are related. Okay, uh, specifically, precise point is the parent of labeled point, so there's a relationship there. But even you know, between precise point and labeled point and simple point, there's a relationship there as well. We're essentially talking about the same kinds of things. Um, I'd like you to open up the I coordinate T um, dot CS file. There's nothing defined in it yet, but what we're going to do is we're going to define an interface. Now we've done an interface like this before where we had uh, the I, I coordinate interface, I believe it was called, and we can replicate that very quickly. Okay, so this is a, a public interface called I coordinate, which specifies that it has to have a public integer property called X and a public integer property called Y. This is, again, in a previous tutorial, I said video before, but in a previous tutorial, we had defined this exact thing. Um, but here's the thing, you know, this interface can't be used for both a precise point and a simple point because a simple point could support that interface, but precise point can't because they're not integer properties. So what we're going to do is we're going to change this uh, interface from a regular interface to a generic interface. Okay, and it's simple enough. You could probably figure this out on your own, to be quite frank. But I'm just going to add some angle bra uh, brackets, and uh, I'll add in the fact that uh, yeah, there is a variable um, type parameter uh, which I'll call t. Okay, and then I'll replace the the two integers with t. So now this says, hey, you know, if I, I, I can create an interface dynamically um, that's, uh, you know, going to be applicable to anything that has an x and a y uh, property that, that both have sets and gets. Um, I can constrain it as well, just like I could uh, with, with other generic things. I could say t, it doesn't make sense that the x would be a uh, uh, for example, a, a grade, uh, that doesn't make sense for a coordinate. Um, I want to probably restrict it to um, value types if I can. So I'm going to add that, that constraint to it. OK, so now that we have the I coordinate uh, generic uh, defined, generic interface defined, I'm going to go back to simple point, And I'm going to say, hey, this, this supports the I coordinate interface. OK. Um, the, the, an, an integer version of it. All right. So I have to specify what, what type of uh, interface this is. So um, even though I didn't define an integer version of I coordinate, uh, it's able to dynamically build one at runtime. All right. And then, of course, I'll go to precise point here, and I will add support for a double version of I coordinate. 
So at runtime, if I'm dealing with precise points, it's going to dynamically create an interface um, uh, that deals with doubles. Now you may recall interfaces are inherited, so I don't have to specifically say that labeled point uh, supports I coordinate double. Uh, it's it's it does though. All right, so we have those two. Um, uh, sorry, we have the the three things, the two classes and the and the one structure, all being all supporting some version of I coordinate. Now an another option I could have is. Uh, I could also create a, I'll go, go back to the simplepoint.cs file. I can actually create um, a generic structure, okay? And creating a generic structure is pretty much exactly the same as creating a generic class. Uh, everything you know about the class, I'm not going to repeat all of that stuff, but uh, we can create a generic point class that, you know, um, let's say I want X and Y to be characters or shorts or something like that. I don't have to constantly define all of these things. So um, yeah, I can do that kind of thing. So let's do that. Okay, so generic point, when I specify the type, the X and the Y properties are of that type. Okay, and it really doesn't matter whether this is a struct or a class, to be honest. I've decided to make it a struct because that's what we're talking about. Now, just like before, I could, uh, you know, I can constrain it and I can support interfaces. So let, let's start off with the interface. So I'll say colon. It's supposed to support the I coordinate interface, which it, it clearly should be able to do. It would help if I could type. Okay, now which version of the I coordinate interface will it support? Well, it'll support the T version. Okay, so. Uh, you know, when I create one of these structures and I, you know, specify it, uh, it should be char, let's say, it's actually going to dynamically create a new interface called I coordinate char, uh, which is kind of interesting. And uh, I'm going to, since the, the interface has a constraint on, I should constrain, um, constrain T as well using the same constraint. So I'm going to say where T uh, has to be a value type. Okay. All right, so let's uh, go back to, I'm just going to save everything here. I'm going to go back to my program class in generic interfaces. I've got a number of comments here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create a couple of lists um, using the interface that I just created to see if I can make these different types of points work together. Um, let's create a list of interface variables that are based on uh, the double version, okay, so precise points and labels and that sort of stuff. So I'm going to use my generic list, list, okay, and it's a list of what? So I could say here precise point or labeled point or whatever, uh, but what I want a list of is I coordinates. Okay, and which type of I coordinate do I want? Uh, so I, I think I said double before, right? So double. Okay. Uh, I'll give it a name. I'll call it uh, I don't know real coordinates. That's my uh, that's my list. And then equals new. And it will be a new. I'm just going to copy this. Save myself some tiny bit of typing and won't make any mistakes. That's what the constructor looks like. So what is this a list of? It's a list of I coordinate double interface variables, which means what the list will actually contain are objects that support I coordinate double. Okay, so I'm going to add several new objects that support this interface, the I coordinate double interface. Okay, so uh, here I'm creating a generic structure, a generic point uh, based on doubles that supports the interface, a precise point. That supports the interface, and a labeled point also supports that interface. So I can add these different things. If I go to try to add something that doesn't support that interface, um, like, for example, a new simple point, okay. All of a sudden, it gives me an error, right? So it's not just accepting anything here. It is, in fact, restricting it to very certain types. Uh, this is what I want. So definitely, I will take that out. Um, 
So the next step, I'm just going to output a heading, and then for each of the um, uh, each of the things in real coordinates in that collection, I'm going to show the type of item being referred to. Okay, so we'll we'll do that those steps. Okay, so I'm opening a little bit of a heading for each i coordinate double, and which I'm calling point in the real coordinates um, list, uh, and I'm just I just want to know what the type is so I can see that actually working. All right, so uh, I'm going to try running that and see how far we get. This is uh, item number six. And um, so in the real coordinate list, I've got a, you can see that the, the generic point, because it itself uh, was a generic, it's coming up a little bit weird, but it's basically telling me it's a generic point structure based on system double. Okay. Um, the next one was a precise point, and the next one after that was a labeled point. I don't know whether there should be two L's there or not. It looks kind of weird to me right now. Anyways, um, yeah, so that worked out okay. So let's do the same thing based on uh, an integer. My comments here are not correct. It should say based on an int. All right. So I added a bunch of code that time. I apologize, but um, it's, it's the same as above. So this time I'm creating a, um, a list of i-coordinate ints. Uh, I'm calling it whole coordinates, but I'm doing the same kind of thing. I'm adding... Well, it's not several objects, but a couple of new objects that support i-coordinate int, which are generic point as an integer and simple point. And again, if I were to try to add, say, like a precise point or something that doesn't support the interface, um, just a default one there, it doesn't really matter. Okay, it's going to give me some, some issues there saying, hey, precise point is not something I can convert into an i-coordinate int. So it's, it's not supported, okay? Um, and then just to prove that it actually works, I'm gonna do the same sort of uh, loop again, where I'm going through each of the i-coordinate int, which I'm calling point in whole coordinates, and outputting the type. So we'll run this new version. Okay, so my real coordinate list, that still works, and you can see my whole coordinate list also works. And this time the generic point is based on system int 32 when it uh, outputs the type. Um, so that's just a very simple example that shows uh, using, mostly the focus, honestly, is mostly on the uh, interface, um, generic interface. Uh, so I never actually defined what an i-coordinate double was. It did that. Through that generic, it created that dynamically at runtime. Um, so that's pretty handy. Um, again, as I mentioned in the first video, uh, what would naturally come after this is a discussion of the concept of variance. Um, and I think I will reserve that for a future tutorial. Um, that's it. Thank you very much.